So now to our classic, and it is Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, or to give it its formal title, travels into several remote nations of the world in four parts. The first is the one we all know about, when Gulliver, who's a ship's surgeon, is washed ashore on the island of Lilliput, and he is tied up, that picture we all know from uh, the kids' books, by the island's six-inch tall inhabitants. But that is really just the beginning, because Gulliver is a traveller, and he travels on. He discovers a world of giants, an island um, which flies, called Laputa, um, and finally a land where horses rule, served by a race of brutish humans called yahoos. The book has influenced the likes of Voltaire, of Tolkien, of Philip K. Dick, and in fact Laputa is even referenced in the movie Doctor Strangelove. It is you, Adam Liao, who brought us this book. <laughs> Tell us. Why it's a classic? I, I feel a bit sheepish, and more so after your <laughs> accusatory tone. Because <laughs> this is one of my absolute favourite books, was one of my absolute favourite <laughs> books from when I was a child. It was from the period I was probably 12 or 13, and my mother had stopped buying me toys and started buying me books instead. I liked the satire of it, and it made me more interested in politics reading this book. And I remember after it, I started drawing political cartoons and showing them to my parents, which was terrible because I'm a terrible, terrible <laughs> political analyst. But I enjoyed drawing them. I remember one of, of Bob Hawke that I drew and he had a hawk for a head and he was Genius. doing something with the economy. I had no <laughs> Genius, idea. that's really <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> this was 12 year old me. Let, me. let me point that out. But um, I enjoyed sort of finding out about the world as other people saw it. Here was this person writing satire about the way the world is. Mm. Uh, from hundreds of years ago, which is not all that different to the way the world is today. Mm. And this admiration is all very past tense. <laughs> it is. It very is. past tense. Reading it again, uh, which I forced myself to do as penance for forcing all of you to read it as well, it was all but unreadable. You know, I. I you noticed. I did notice. <laughs> it, uh, I tried to, to reconcile the fact that it was a hundreds of years old book now and obviously the turns of phrase are not going to be as elegant as we might have in the 21st century but even the the satire of it became boys club satire and a, a poke at the other people mm. in the boys club that I was not particularly enjoying. I think we'll come back to you shortly Adam for more <laughs> because I think it's really important that we share the views <laughs> that we have reached. Do, we, have we ever had uh, somebody who's brought on along their favourite? <laughs> and Renee. <men> <laughs> and Renee. That's a first. <laughs> no, I have never had a Renee. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to be the first and I apologise to Jonathan Swift also. But, no, um, no, us mainly. Yes, <laughs> mainly <laughs> you. Mainly well, well I look, I, I mean, I, I thought some of it was absolutely fascinating and some of it was, yeah. you know, somewhat tedious, actually. Um, the bits that, obviously, everybody knows the lily putt stuff, and so there's, that's immediately accessible. And obviously people know um, the, the end bit with the yahoos, and I cannot even begin to pronounce <gasps> Now, we're say can it? I say, this, word, this is the horses. We're yeah. talking now about the horses. Because the horses, who were the, the absolutely the, the heroes of the last chapter, and in fact, Gulliver falls yeah. head over heels in love with the wisdom and wit and rationality of the horses, and he comes home and he doesn't want to deal with people anymore. And these yeah. are the name of the horses. That's what they're called. Yeah. So... Have Can we all, would you like to have a go? Uh, this is part of the problem. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I want the go, not the explanation. Who, who, who knew him? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think you've got, to, you've got to winning it. I think it's got to be yeah. a horse, it's got to be a neigh, so... <laughs> <laughs> we have a winner. We have a winner. That is really good. And I'm going to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, would you please all have a go? What are these horses called? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and that, that collectively that sounded like a winnie. Yeah, totally. Very good work. Well, the... <laughs> <laughs> As you were saying... As I was, what was I? I've got no idea what... No. Uh, and so those ones that one, sort of, one knows about, whether from reading it or not, are immediately somewhat more accessible. Other chunks, other parts of his travels are 
yeah, a bit dull, and I, I was losing myself in, in parts of them. But then there are other things which are really, really fascinating. I mean, you do have to bear in mind it was published in 1726, so it's, that's only sort of six or seven years after Robinson Crusoe, which is supposedly the first and realist novel. And that was novel. what it was, the first satire uh, was the yeah. Traveller's Tales. And he looks back to, he's talking to somebody, and I've got no idea who it is. He's describing the past century, which is the 17th century, and he just sort of nails this in, in one paragraph about revolution, war, this, 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 in Britain, you know, which was when the Civil War was on mm. and King Charles was executed. But, but that was, to me, the problem. There was so much he was tilting at. I mean, I, yeah. I really wanted to love this. It's quite a long book, though. I, uh, yeah. What do you think? In that? It bored the pants off me. Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute oh. pants. He Thank was big, he PG's was small, he version. talked to a horse, humans are garbage, the end. Right, that was, that's the book. It was just, I can't remember the last time I was so deeply bored reading a book. <laughs> just, oh, well, why end a sentence when you can just put another comma in there? And, no, no, and he ah, loves it, let's loves keep it. Saying <laughs> Put more words in. Oh, and tell he... me in great detail how everything in Lilliput was very yeah. small. Oh, yes. <laughs> he, was like, yes. he was like everything. <laughs> he was like a pub ball. You could imagine yeah. him in the corner of a pub going, and then I fashioned a comb <laughs> made from the two nails. Oh, and you're like, oh God, rack off, Swift. Yeah. <laughs> he's just there in the corner. And he's so pious mm. about other humans with their disgusting, <laughs> sinful ways. He is just a wank <laughs> like, uh, calling yeah. it. I'm sorry. I mean, I found the lily put stuff okay, and I found the last bit okay, but not the bit in between. Not behind. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was most the interesting was his obsession with going to the toilet. Yeah, oh my God. Was, oh, oh, this is what it's like going to the toilet when I was little. Oh, this is what it's like going <laughs> yeah. to the toilet when I was big and they had to use wheelbarrows. <laughs> and then he got shat on for a couple I of know. times, which I enjoyed quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, he got shat on again. That's great. He's obsessed. Loves it. Loves poos and ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cannot get enough of that scat. Virginia, we have not heard your take yet. Well, so I was forced to read it at university and I wondered whether reading it again and my reticence in picking it up and my reticence in getting into it was about having been forced to read it. And I felt I felt the entire time like I was going to have to write an essay on it. I had anxiety <laughs> dreams. I was but like, you dressed to match. I yeah. have come <laughs> dressed <laughs> as Gulliver's Travel. Just noticed. It's terrifying <laughs> to me. Just noticed. Um, <laughs> and where's your essay? Yeah, oh, oh God! <laughs> um, I, I, I have to say, I, I also I enjoyed the who oh, you know, him <laughs> and the yahoos at the end, I think possibly because I hadn't read them before, because I'd gotten three <laughs> chapters in and gone, oh, God, I'll just make it up, yeah. you know, when it came to exam time. Um, I, I, I really agree. Very dry, very smart, mm. makes some very salient points, but could have made it in a pamphlet. <laughs> that would have been an idea for me. It raises some very interesting ideas about satire, I think. So firstly, you've got to know a lot about the genre mm -hmm. that it's satirising. So we've got to have all read Robinson Crusoe. But then it makes me think, all of the things which I love most these days about pop culture, I love satire. Mm. I love The Chaser. I love, I love sketch comedy shows. I love this. And it makes me think, will these have any cultural relevance yeah. once, once the things that they're satirising are gone? It must have been a hugely radical book in 1726 or whatever. Yeah. And I think, I think to sort of just dismiss it as No, being, we're not dismissing it. Well, we're, we're taking it apart. <laughs> which is different. Well, taking it apart and then dismissing it. <laughs> um, I, think, I think it's a little bit unfair, but because I think you have to allow for the fact that it's... It is 300 years old. I think the interesting thing is, so Bob Carr came on this show years ago and bought Peter Pan as his favourite. Really? And, and it was a childhood favourite. And I think Jennifer said, how did it feel to read it again? And he, he said, well, I didn't read it again. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't read it again because I didn't want to spoil my oh. recollections of it from childhood. Which at first we were all slightly scandalised by going, he didn't read the book, he didn't read the book. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? But I kind of loved that he wanted to protect the memory yeah. and he's very intelligent so he spoke about it, you know, at great length. And maybe he shouldn't have read it again. I would have loved to have heard what 12-year-old Adam told us about <laughs> Let's get him on troubles. next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of feel like about this the same way that the Japanese talk about Mount Fuji. A, a clever man climbs it once and a fool climbs it twice. Oh, wow. On that wisdom, oh my God. we're going to move on. You are forgiven for bringing this <laughs> difficult book. Um, and, um, yes, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just letting the, the truth and wisdom of that sink in. <laughs> 
because that is our show for tonight. <laughs> Won't you uh, join me in thanking our guests? Thank you to Adam, to Marie, to Jason, and to Virginia.